is a Rolex authorised dealer. The place where people go to buy their Rolex watch brand new, fresh off the Geneva production line. To many, this is a place that materialises dreams, ambition and rewards hard work and success. But for years now, that place has become a Royal Mint, a Federal Reserve, a factory that literally prints money for an opportunistic cohort we know as flippers. But those days are coming to an end. 90% of Rolex watches now trade less on the grey market than at retail. And if you watched me on last week's video, you'll know that a lot has changed. Most unprofitable Rolex watches now then, flippers are saying, no thanks, I'll pass on that. So let's conclude the rundown and reveal whether the curtain has finally fallen on the flipper's dominion. Rolex, to flip or pass? Welcome back guys, I'm Vinny. Let's kick this off with a model line that we didn't cover in last week's Flip or Pass, and that is of course the Skydweller collection. Now specifically we're going to look at the Skydweller with a black dial fitted to an oyster bracelet. Now this watch currently retails at £13,650. So is it a flip? or a pass. A dealer may offer you only around £12,000 and that would result in a loss of £1,650, which of course is a pass and it's becoming pretty much a theme now, isn't it? Sticking with the Skydweller collection then, let's move on to the most hyped Skydweller of all and that is with the blue dial fitted to the Jubilee bracelet because that is by far the most popular and sought after combination. Retail price on this now is £13,850 and a dealer Dealer would offer you around £15,500, which in stark contrast to the black dial variant on the Oyster bracelet, this would actually result in a profit of £1,650. So of course, that is a big flip opportunity fresh out of the authorised dealer. How about a new release in the Skydweller collection? Let's take a look at the solid 18 karat rose gold Skydweller with that lovely light blue dial. Now this has been very popular since it was launched at Watches and Wonders last year and remains so. I haven't seen too many of them out there on the secondary market so it is also quite a rare piece. The retail on this is £44,500 and a dealer, I believe, would offer you around forty-five to forty-seven thousand pounds. So, is this a flip or a pass? It is, of course, a flip opportunity, and would result in a small profit, really, relative to the retail price of one thousand five hundred pounds. Let's turn our attention to the biggest waitlist of all Rolexes at authorised dealers. It has always been the case that the Submariner Date is the most wanted of the steel sports watches, and it still is. Waitlists are still very long, and this is still a very difficult watch to get at the authorised dealer. The retail price on this is £9,000 for the black bezel version, and a dealer would offer you around £9,400. It is a flip, but only a small one. I mean, £400 is it worth? worth getting out of bed for that? Is it worth building up a spend history with your authorised dealer waiting five years on the longest wait list of all seemingly to then flip it for a small £400 profit on a £9,000 investment? I don't think so. How about the Submariner date with the green bezel aka the Starbucks? I really like this watch now that they've improved the bezel coloration on this particular latest variant that was launched last year at W&W. It is exactly the same bezel as is featured on the Submariner Hulk, the very famous Submariner Hulk. But what price does this sit at at retail? This is a £9,450 watch and a dealer would offer you a around 10,800 on that, resulting in a profit of 1,350. Well, that's an okay profit, I suppose, over a thousand pounds on that watch. It has fallen significantly. I mean, I remember when the Submariner Starbucks initially came out, you would have made four or 5,000 pounds profit flipping that to a secondary market dealer and all of the rapid retail price increases we've seen from Rolex combined with a stagnating secondary market that has hasn't followed the lead of those retail price increases has now resulted in a much smaller profit at trade. <laughs> 
It's Daytona time, and for a little bit of fun, let's have a look at an off-catalogue piece. This is the solid white gold Daytona Le Mans edition. This was released last year. Beautiful piece. It's fashioned out of solid 18 karat white gold, so we'll scratch the moment you breathe on it. But hey, you probably never see one in the flesh anyway. I haven't seen one. I've not seen any for sale in the UK on the secondary market either, other than on Chrono24 there are a couple available. Some vendors are trying to achieve £160,000 on that, but I think that is probably unrealistic and they most certainly would take offers on those pieces. The AD retail price on this, as I said, this is an off-catalogue piece, so it isn't published, but we believe that this is, according to my research, a watch that would have cost around £41,500. A dealer may offer you, if you can find one, around £130,000 to £140,000 on this. Is this a flip or a pass? Of course, that is a very sumptuous flip opportunity and would result in a profit of around, on average, £95,000. So that's great. You could buy yourself a Ferrari with the profit that you would make from this, flipping it out of the offer dealer but as I say that is in a fantasy world you will not be able to get this watch in your dreams. Moving on to another dream Daytona let's have a look at the brand new 126 reference Daytona Platinum with baguette diamond dial. Now this is the holy grail for many it's certainly one of my own holy grails and is one of the most expensive Rolexes that you can pick up brand new on the secondary market. Is it a flip or a pass? Well, well, let's have a look at the retail price. This is a watch which would cost you £72,200 if you were lucky enough to get the call from the AD and a dealer would offer you around £86,000 on it. So that would result in a very handsome profit of around £13,800. Again, I, this was a lot higher at one point. The profit you would have realised would have been well over £20,000 but that just really sums up where the market is at right now. That is probably the most desirable and dream holy grail Daytona of all that's on catalogue that is and yet you would only make under £15,000 profit. The much loved and lusted after Daytona Panda. We're going to look at the most recent reference, the 126500LN. Where does that sit on the market right now? Is it a flip or a pass? The retail price on this now is £13,200 and a dealer would offer you a very princely £23,000 on that. So that would result in a profit of £9,800. So that, of course, course is a big flip opportunity if you've waited the many years and bought many Rolexes from your AD to get this watch. Again, I don't really think that's something that you would want to sell, to be honest with you, but it still represents a very handsome profit on the secondary market, so it does go to show that there is still some demand there. This is a watch that's got really a long way to fall before it becomes a pass. <music> Let's take a look at the most recent Rolex edition to my own collection. It is the Air King 126 900. I absolutely love this watch and couldn't care less if it was a flip or a pass opportunity, but let's have a look at that anyway. The AD retail price now on this is £6,500. However, a dealer would only offer you, sadly, around £5,700, which would result in a loss of £800 on this watch. I, I couldn't believe that, to be honest with you. It is one of the best entry-level Rolex pieces that money can buy. It's a really solid, capable sports watch. Now, the new design and the refinements to the case, the uh, bracelet, the dial, just make this all round the perfect entry-level Rolex steel sports watch. So I don't understand why demand isn't really there for it at all. Sticking with the theme of entry-level Rolex steel sports watches. Let's have a look at the Explorer 40. I thought that this would be a flip opportunity. To be honest, this is a watch with incredible history and gravitas. Collectors around the world with multi-million pound collections have an Explorer. And for that reason, it is one of the best bang for buck Rolex watches I think money can buy, specifically with a retail price of around £6,650. However, a dealer would only offer you around £6,000 
£1,100 for this, which would result in a loss of £550. Of course, this is no longer a profitable flip opportunity fresh out of the authorised dealer, which came as a surprise to me, but there you go. I mean, that just really sums up how the market is right now. GMT time, and the only one I haven't covered yet over these videos is the GMT Master 2 Sprite. This is the lefty, a weird oddity in the GMT collection, I would say, with that left-handed crown and date position. Demand for it still holds quite firm on the secondary market. Why is that? Because there is a prevailing belief similar to the Pepsi, I would say, within this GMT model line, that this will be discontinued. Purely based on the understanding that while this is a strange one, your Rolex don't tend to produce strange odd watches for too long, and therefore it makes some rational sense that this will be discontinued and it could explode in value. Well, as I say, don't buy into the hype, don't buy into those rumours that are based on no facts whatsoever. Is this a flip or a pass? It's still a massive flip opportunity, probably because of all that hype that surrounds this. The retail price would be £9,800 and a dealer would offer you around £12,600 on that. That would result in a profit of £2,800. However, be warned if this watch isn't discontinued at Watches and Wonders in just a couple of weeks' time, that profit margin may fall. It probably will. So if you've got that watch and you're looking to flip it, flip it now. So there we go, guys. To conclude, most Rolex watches in their catalogue, I would say around 90 to 95% of them now are a pass. And really, that is a tidal change. It is a change from the last couple of years that we have been used to, that secondary market dealers have been used to. And as a result of falling market sentiment and demand for Rolex watches, which has driven prices is down at trade value, the overzealous, bravado-fueled knobs of the grey market have fallen, leaving behind the professional businessmen and the real dealers. These dealers have felt the pain of losses over the last two years in a volatile market, and once bitten, twice shy. That saying is very relevant, because I grew up in a world where Rolex watches wouldn't lose money. Rolex watches were good investments, and now the precedent is there that you can lose money on a Rolex, that you can make a wrong decision in buying a Rolex in the belief that you will have an appreciating asset. Now that the precedent is there, dealers, the ones that are left, the professional ones, will be less inclined to jump on the hype bandwagon as quickly as they did and buy a case full of 20 Olive Day dates, a case full of 20 John Mayer Daytonas because the risk is there, the scars are there, so the pace, the fast-flowing hype train that we experienced before won't happen again, and I think that is to the detriment of the Rolex brand. I don't think Rolex wanted that to happen. And with that, the flipper's dominion comes to an end. Wait lists will fall, and whilst they move on, probably back to crypto, Rolex returns to the custody of the people. The hopeful, the ambitious, the successful, the elite, and most importantly of all, the enthusiasts.